When I was 14, my father was stationed in Japan. I went rock climbing with this kid from school. He fell, he got injured, and I had to bring him to the hospital. Oh, we're finally hearing House's origin story right now. Maybe we'll find out why he's so grumpy, yet so lovable. You guys have been absolutely loving the House reaction videos, so I've got another episode that's been requested by you, son of a coma guy. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. S. I'm a GP registrar, final year in London. Why don't we watch it together? Let's go. What are you doing down here? I thought you usually had lunch with Coma Guy. This is Vegetative Steak Guy. Better company. Uh, hey, hey, tell him about those Sherpas you dropped acid with in St. Patrick's Cathedral. I'm seeing a running trend here. House likes to speak to his patients on one condition. They're incapacitated. <laughs> but if you look closely to the patient's face, you can't see any tube. So how is he being fed? Usually, there's a tube that goes down into the stomach that you, the med medical team can put a drip onto with all the nutrition someone needs to sustain them. So that's a big oversight from the medical advisors on this episode. You stole my prescription pad and you forged my name. What did you tell the cop? I lied. They'd have put you away for 10 years after they took your license to practice medicine. You know, there is a street value for prescription pads, <laughs> I'm told. Uh, around £100 per pad here in the UK. It would be an addict's dream to get their hands on one because it would be unlimited drugs courtesy of the UK taxpayer. Joining my father for lunch. I should have called ahead for a table. It's okay. After 10 years, anything that'll get doctors in the same room is... Chips. You may be wondering, has House finally had his last breakdown? <laughs> but it looks like he's trying to trigger a seizure in a vegetative state guy's son. Um, and he's just throwing the chips in for fun. I want to see something really cool. I saw you leaving last Tuesday. Practically tripped over two guys on your way out, but you had no problem opening doors. It's called a kinetopsia. Ooh, echinotopsia is a very interesting condition uh, doctors get very excited about. It's basically where you've got damage to an area in your brain called the V5 pathway, and that's the part that processes movement. So the house episode isn't so accurate because if you've got echinotopsia, it's not like you don't see moving objects at all. It's more like seeing them as a series of still images. Anyone who's uh, like played an online game with a bad internet connection knows what that looks like when you've got lag and you've got freeze frames. So you can check it out. Since you haven't been hit by a bus, I assume that it's intermittent. It's probably accompanied by seizures, which made me think that I could set one off by flashing them. God, I love this family. <laughs> I love House's lack of concern for the patient having a seizure on the floor. He makes it look like he's just in for the academic part of medicine. But House, I know you. I've seen the other episode where you were up late at night with a skull fracture, still trying to diagnose a patient in there somewhere. You are a softie. <laughs> And be, that being said, though, that was later in the, in the series, so. Uh, we will we'll just ignore that. Maybe it's inherited. How would you jump to genetics from his EEG? Well, you've got us some vaguely epileptiform waves. It's not his EEG. It's his father's. When it comes to cortical seizures, like father, like son. See, it's very interesting because even if two people have the same genetics, like identical twins, there's still variation in what happens. It's the nature versus nurture argument. Like, identical twins have at least a 25% variation in IQ um, based on their environment. It's very interesting. What caused the vegetative state? His house burned down. Went back in to get his wife. Firefighters found him unconscious, three feet from the bedroom, asphyxiated. Not an inherited condition. Wait, so how might smoke inhalation cause a coma? Well, when you take in the smoke, then that starts to affect your lungs' as oxygen carrying capabilities. Um, that then starves your brain of oxygen 
and we know that the brain is one of the most sensitive organs in the body to oxygen and if it's without it for about five minutes you already get brain death um, and the damage is irreversible which makes me think that this coma may not have been caused by smoke inhalation in the first place um, so I would be thinking well could it be some kind of poisoning or limbic encephalitis which can cause seizure and coma um, or maybe even something like a really long seizure like non-convulsive status epilepticus or he could have thiamine deficiency or a hormone signaling issue who knows let's watch on we need more clues test his dna start with adrenomyelin neuropathy check out the hall see it has adreno in its name adrenomyelin neuropathy um, which makes you think it's hormonal but it's actually a genetic disease which starts to present um, in men after the age of 20s because it's X-linked, it can cause stiffness, leg weakness, um, speech difficulties and adrenal insufficiency. But I'm interested to see what they found in the house. I'm old, no leaks, no pets. MRI and LP are both inconclusive. Infection's still possible, tumor's less likely, but... DNA? Adrenal myelonoropathy test was negative. DNA test again. Try Unverg's Lomborg and later on said Lafora. See, Unverg's Lomborg, I bet you've never heard of that condition. Um, that and Lafora are both genetic diseases, a part of a family called progressive myoclonic epilepsy. Um, they cause rapid muscle jerks um, while awake and more classic seizures. But this is where the inaccuracies start because Unverg's Lomborg Typically, the parents are not affected at all because it's a, an autosomal recessive condition, which means that if the parents have both abnormal genes, it's likely they won't um, survive and be able to reproduce to an age where they can have children. Um, so House is looking for a genetic cause um, to link the child's problems with his dad, but this is not it. So there you go. Now I guarantee you, you're the only person in your friendship group who knows what Unverg's Lumberg disease is. That is the value that we provide on this channel. Genetic tests take forever. You can't just keep testing for every inherited condition you think it might be. Well, not me. I'll be leaving early, but you guys can. You see, this is why it's much better for the people who ask for the tests to not be the ones who do the test. Otherwise, the plan would include too few investigations because the doctors would be giving themselves way too much work to do. It reminds me of the professors who come on the wards and they come up with three times more jobs than usual or yielding no extra benefits for the patient and a lot of extra work. No offense, but stick to the labs, profs. What is it? Just feeling a little nauseous. I think his liver's failing. <laughs> okay, okay. One thing about House is they literally never show liver failure well. I mean, it, it literally never presents like this, especially in a Caucasian person. They go noticeably yellow because the liver doesn't excrete the bile salts that can stain the blood yellow um, and their ankles and abdomen start retaining water because their liver produces something called albumin which stops water from leaking out of the capillaries and yes it can cause bleeds at later points because when the blood can't flow back to the heart through the liver it has to be redirected through accessory pathways and some of those are in the gut and when those pathways have more high pressure, then they're more likely to bleed and cause this. So the most common cause of liver failure is actually drinking alcohol. If you can, avoid it totally, but if you must drink, then have less than 14 units per week. So that's around um, one beer a day. Given the fact that he's an alcoholic, there's a good chance his liver wasn't so hot when he came in. Anti-seizure drugs could just push him over the edge. Maybe academic. I just started him on dialysis. Kidney and liver failure. Not too many people come back from that. This patient has hepatorenal syndrome. Its 30-day survival rate is less than 10%. What happens is as the liver shuts down, it releases a signaling molecule that causes your blood vessels to dilate. That 
leads to a drop in blood pressure. Your kidneys try and account for that, but if they can't, that leads to kidney failure. But thankfully we have a machine that can replace the job of the kidneys called dialysis. Many patients can live on for years with dialysis, although uh, kidney failure still significantly affects how long they're likely to live. The main thing that will kill people on dialysis could be infections or heart problems. We need a better history. You're not waking Kyle. You're waking his father. You have no reason to think any amount of drugs will wake a man from a coma. Vegetative state. Much easier. <laughs> See, what on earth is the difference between a coma and a vegetative state? Well, in a coma, the person actually is unconscious. But in a vegetative state, the patient is conscious but doesn't show any signs of being awake. It's also called unresponsive wakefulness. So in theory, someone in a vegetative state, if given the right treatment, could wake up and be totally okay. Um, but L-Dopa is a par anti-Parkinson's drug, so I don't know how it's going to help our friendly vegetative state patient. Even if you woke him, it would only be for a few hours. You're risking his life. You'll be torturing him and his family. Good news for legal. The only family he's got is upstairs dying. Why? Oh my god, only house would get away with injecting an unconscious <laughs> or unresponsive patient stimulants as an experiment. I would love to see what an ethics board has to say about that, but I don't know. Will it work? I want this patient monitored for the next 24 hours. I want someone with him at all times to make sure you didn't kill him. I want your ass in my office. God, I'm starving. I could really go for a steak. <gasps> I love how that worked. <laughs> no wonder you're hungry, my friend. I would be too if I hadn't eaten for 10 years and the hospital wasn't feeding me with an NG tube like it was supposed to. At least now they can ask him some questions about his family history because his son isn't too hot on their family roots. Any history of seizure in your family? No. Liver disease? No. How long have I been here? I got the feeling it's um, been a long time. Interesting your internal clock kept ticking. Your body can measure time in something known as the circadian rhythm, uh, which helps humans adapt to changes in our surroundings. It's thought that organisms with circadian clocks had, could improve their fitness compared to their non-cyclical counterparts by better predicting changes in the environment's humidity, temperature, uh, and light. Kyle's down to a three in the RLES scale. He's only showing localized response. Ah, the patient's getting worse, so they need to find an answer and fast. The scale they're using is called the Ranchos Los Amigos scale, which is developed in that hospital uh, head injury unit, and it was used to measure patients coming out of a coma. Lowest score is one, highest and best score is 10. It measures things like responsiveness, um, behavior and memory to, and gives them a number so it's on an objective scale. What did you make in your factory? Luxury boats. These boats, I assume you use mildew resistant paint on the hulls? Naturally. Did you ever take your son to the factory? Sure. They used to run all over the place but it was perfectly safe. Okay, first of all, this guy wakes up from a coma and the first thing he wants to do is to go get a sandwich. Second of all, this is actually really clever and I'll tell you why. Um, because the amount of dangerous chemicals in mildew resistant spray paints used for boats uh, vastly reduced 10 years before this episode was released, which is exactly the moment that the other patient here, the one who woke up from his coma, um, started to be in a coma. So that's no coincidence. That's actually fantastic story writing um, because you know mercury, for example, is no longer used in paint, lead paint was um, also in use and it was mostly banned around the 80s, though um, it's, you know, this patient's condition is likely less related to lead, could be mercury, um, but who knows though, maybe it's not mercury poisoning. It would just fit so perfectly though. I got my answer. While dad's in the office, son's watching them spray paint and what kid wears a mask. Mercury specifically targets the central nervous system. Ooh, so it could be mercury. Um, you see, 
the signs and symptoms could be feeling numb, tremors, unsteady walking, double vision or blurry vision, um, memory loss or even seizure. I think that's what they're getting at, but it also could be something else though. Like for example, if the child wasn't looking after himself well, wasn't eating enough meat, could be B12 deficient, or it could even be a genetic problem uh, called pernicious anemia that would link him and his dad together that leads to low B12 levels, um, and that can cause um, nerve damage and both of their symptoms. Anyways, we just need some test results so we can find out more. Finally, they have a tube in someone's nose. This guy's been unconscious for a day and he managed to get a tube there. And I also love how it's held together, which is what, with what is basically a piece of sticky tape. You need a really strong trouser dressing that attaches to the nose and then wraps around the tube itself and holds it secure because people pull these things out all the time. I once remember having to put a tube back in around 2 a.m. around three times for a confused patient in bowel obstruction. Sometimes it gets to the point where we have to actually stitch the tube into someone's nose because it falls out so much, but that can be a double-edged sword because if they are motivated enough, they can pull out the tube and take part of their nose with it. Ouch. BP starting to drop. So that's down to 70. Three milligrams of epi. It's not his liver. It's the heart. Ooh, so what could this be now? The heart is involved, so it could be drug overdose with something like um, tricyclic antidepressants. It could be viral hemorrhagic fever, parasitosis, um, niacin or pyridoxine deficiency, that's B3 or B6, um, which could also be in steak, which might be why the dad wants a sandwich so badly. Um, or it could be, you know, adult onset metabolic disorders like perforia. Um, at, at this point, you know, you would want to check the stool for parasites. You'd want to send tox screens uh, for overdoses. Um, you'd definitely want to echo his heart, see what the actual structural problem is. Do vitamin B3 and B6 levels, although they take a little bit longer to come back, uh, and metabolic screening tests. House is house of whining. State your complaint. Patient's BP just dropped like a stone. To an echo. Mercury isn't likely to damage. It didn't. Mercury test was negative. To an echo. Ooh, okay, so the echo is actually important to check the chamber of the heart, check the valves, make sure there's no infection inside the valves, check for um, heart failure or signs of strain or if any bits of the heart aren't moving as they would. You could be sent for one if you've got a heart murmur and especially if that's a complete accompanied by a new fever. So we used to do them in cardiothoracic surgery a lot. I still remember there was a patient who had a hair transplant in Turkey who ended up with more than he bargained for and got an infection inside the valves of his heart, needed heart surgery and um, a valve replacement. Six to eight weeks of antibiotics so got definitely got more than what he bargained for there. Be careful who you choose for a hair transplant. And the, you know, that, left unchecked it can be serious or even fatal let me put it this way if you deliver there'll be a hundred dollar tip in it for you excellent victory <laughs> the night is finally going my way wilson toss me a soda oh it looks like the little pick-me-up that house gave him is finally starting to wear off he's got delayed motor function which indicates could be sliding back into a coma and time might be running out unless they find out what's causing it and are able to reverse it. Why did you become a doctor? Well, okay, let's discuss the wonder of the human body. No, no, no. You're a curious guy. You like to figure things out. Why not go into research? Why work with people when you obviously hate people? See, I see this time and time again. It's very interesting because many doctors don't go into medicine to help people. They go in for, you know, status or power, but a lot of stereotypes and perceptions of doctors are wrong. See, doctors don't earn anywhere near as much as people think. Um, you see, the starting salary of doctors in the UK, for example, is around $36,000. And for the hours that you do, you would actually earn more working in Lidl. So surprisingly, we're not all driving Lamborghinis and wearing Rolexes. 
I, I just went past the consultant car park in one of the most prestigious hospitals in London and it was all basically uh, Renaults and Fiats and there was one Tesla out of five. So even the most senior doctors aren't rolling in it either. Yeah, of course you have got you know, the exception to the rule, especially in the US who have a booming private practice um, business or have became online influencers like Dr. Mike and are on absolutely multi-million salaries, but they are really the tip of the iceberg. And you can argue in that point that they're not conventional doctors anymore. When I was 14, my father was stationed in Japan. I went rock climbing with this kid from school. He fell, he got injured, and I had to bring him to the hospital. And we came in through the wrong entrance past this guy in the hall. Oh, we're finally hearing ha House's origin story right now. Maybe uh, we'll find out why he's so grumpy, yet so lovable. Such a multi-level character created by Fox and Hugh Laurie is really justifying the 250,000 pound per episode fee that Hugh Laurie was earning with this monologue. It's a janitor. My friend came down with an infection and doctors didn't know what to do. So they brought in the janitor. He was a doctor and a Baraku. I love an underdog story. You might not know what a Baraku is, but it's the social minority class who are not respected in Japan because of their ancestry. Um, they're descendants of people who used to butcher and uh, make tan leather, kind of impure professions. And so they are outcasts in Japan, looked down upon in some areas. One of Japan's untouchables. His ancestors had been slaughterers, grave diggers. And this guy knew that he wasn't accepted by the staff, didn't even try. He didn't dress well. He didn't pretend to be one of them. See, I know this is a fictional story from a TV series, but there's so much class discrimination out there in the world, and we need to do better to actually address it. Um, I mean, not everyone starts life with equal opportunities, but as they move on, they should gain them. You can judge a society by how they treat their most vulnerable people. The people that ran that place didn't think that he had anything they wanted, except when they needed him, because he was right, which meant that nothing else mattered, and they had to listen to him. Wow, that 14-year-old house has so much insight into what's been going on. What's interesting though is that Hugh Laurie says that he has a negative mindset on the world as well. And while shooting house, he suffered with clinical depression, um, which he channels that negative energy into the house character so well. Can you imagine house played by someone else like Neil Patrick Harris? It just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> the 20 milligrams of diazepam in a syringe. Puppies are regular and accelerating. It's at 200. It's gonna crash. Allergic reaction to the diazepam? See, oh man, do they get, ever get to do any investigation in house without the patient either having a seizure or having a cardiac arrest? I think every episode I've seen so far has both. The truth is that the heart usually doesn't go crazy and start racing during a seizure, and it almost never ends in a seizure, it's unlike in-house. How did your son dislodge the tinder? He dropped the popcorn tray. He had been complaining it was too heavy. I should have listened. And the hit and run, walking the pissy dog, that happened at night? I think so, yeah, why? Oh, how's he starting to connect the dots now? He's realizing the son had muscle weakness and so did many of the people on the mother's side of the family. Interesting, so let's see where he goes with this. I. I don't really have any ideas. Ragged red fiber. It's an inherited condition. Dropping things, muscle weakness, poor night vision. These people seem uncoordinated, accident prone, careless. It's transmitted in mitochondrial DNA, so it only passes through the mother. Okay, House, you beat me on that one. Ragged red fiber, what a diagnosis. It's so rare, quite literally, one in a million. Usually it starts in childhood as well, which is what happened here. Um, a genetic test or muscle biopsy would confirm it by, yes, you guessed it, appearance of ragged red fibers. <laughs> there are treatments with something called coenzyme Q10 and others, but that only limit the condition, not cure it. Your wife's family weren't drunks, they were sick. Wouldn't have affected his liver. The kid is a drunk. He thinks that he killed his mother and turned his father into a vegetable. I'm gonna have a few shots myself. Foreman. Test his DNA. 
for ragged red fiber. Well, that would take a long time. It would be much faster to just take a muscle biopsy and then you would see the fibers there. I'm really curious to know if this patient was seen in real life, how long it would take to diagnose him. I suppose if he had muscle weakness, then you, they would likely do a biopsy, see the fibers there, and then they would know it from that. But he didn't actually have any weakness. It was only until they woke the dad that they found out that he had muscle weakness before. So very interesting. House. The kid has severe cardiomyopathy. Alcoholic, no shot at a transplant. So yeah, maybe you figured out why. Good for you, but he's gonna die anyway. See, usually alcoholics can get transplant under very strict conditions, like if they've been abstinent for the last six months and sign a waiver saying that they will never uh, drink again while having the transplant because what's happened many times before, uh, as I've been on uh, gastroenterology, livers have been given to patients who have said they won't drink again, and then they do, and unfortunately, that transplant, which is an incredibly valuable and limited resource has now been wasted by that patient because it's been damaged when it could have gone to someone else who would be more deserving. But in this case, I'm starting to get an inkling that maybe his dad could donate his heart because he's going back into a coma anyway. He's not gonna have really the quality of life. So I don't know, will he? Let's see. That would be crazy if he does. I want to give Kyle my heart. This thing, whatever it is, you said he gets it from the mother. My heart's fine. And it could go on being fine for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's not like he's gonna do anything with it. Oh my god! Okay, I'm going to claim that. Predicted it. What a beautiful way to end your life, though. The ultimate sacrifice. Giving it, you know, meaning and doing it on your terms. He would need to be comatose though for them to take his heart. They can't just take it while he's awake. Not ethical at all. That can't be all. We get a heart out of it. How many organs do you want from the guy? I mean, my father must have said something. He couldn't just, he must have given you some kind of a message for me. This is absolutely mad. Now the son has a new heart, but only because how generally instructed the dad on how he can kill himself without the heart getting damaged. Medical negligence lawyers would be having a field day with this. I can hear them rubbing their hands together right now. My accounts have been frozen as part of a police investigation. You can't keep your money forever. No, they can keep it till I agree to help send you to prison for 10 years. Wait, there are actually police in-house <laughs> and only now they decide to investigate him after all of the patient assaults, home break-ins and experiments, drug taking. Now they decide to show up. Well, I hope they don't catch him because I want to see you again in the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, check out another one here and I'll see you next week. Stay healthy, stay curious.